So in the previous video, we had an example where we had two sets of data and we found that they had the same mean, median, uh, the same interquartile range, uh, same range in fact, um, the modes didn't really make sense comparing them. And we were left with two sets of data that were clearly different, but not really any way of comparing them. Now, what this also leads on to is that the interquartile range as a me measure of variation is OK. Um, but the problem is that although um, the interquartile range is OK as that measure, it doesn't uh, take into account all of the bits of data that you have. OK, so as an example of this, if I had uh, this as my set of data, so let's say, let's just choose one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? Then if I was to find the interquartile range, so here's where the median position would be, the lower quartile would be here, so it would be 2.5, and the upper quartile would be here at 6.5, okay? However, if I then changed maybe the last number to 800, for example, then the interquartile range doesn't change. Okay, so um, because the quartiles are based on its position, on their position, and so it is unaffected by uh, extreme values. Okay, and maybe I want to have a way of comparing two sets of data that takes account of all of the bits of data in that set. Okay, and that's really what we want to look at here, a new way of comparing how varied the data is, because clearly this would have a different variation um, and the, point, the data points vary more than they do if I went just back to 8 as the last value again. Okay? Clearly these two sets of data are different. And we want to measure that difference. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a basic set of data, these five numbers. And we're really going to ask ourselves, um, as a measure of variation, we would like to find how far, perhaps on average, these data points are away from the mean. Because then that would tell you, um, well, would tell you exactly what I've just said, the average away from the mean, that average distance. So if the data points were closer to the mean, I would have a smaller value. And if they were further away from the mean, I would have a larger value. And so it would be a measure of variation. Okay. So in order to visualize this, let's draw a number line and see what this data actually looks like. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, very close, 14. OK, there we are. So I've got a data point at 3. So there's 3, 5, 8, 10, and 14. So there are my data points. OK? So I'm talking about trying to find, on average, how far each of these data points are away from the mean. So first thing that I want to do is find the mean. So the mean will be the sum of all of the x's and divide by how many there are. OK, so I want to add these up. So I'm going to get 3 plus 5 is 8, 8 and 8 is 16, 26, 40. So we've got 40 data, 40 as the total, and we've got five data points. So 40 divided by 5 is 8. So the mean value is there at 8. So now 
what I want to do is find out how far, on average, each of these data points are away from the mean. So I want to find the average of those distances. OK, that's the idea. So let's draw those on as, there we are, OK. So what I would need to do is I would really need to find the difference from uh, each of those data points away to the mean. So if I subtract the mean from each of those data points, I'll have an idea of the distance. So I want to subtract 8 from each of these. So 3 take away 8 is minus 5. 5 take away 8 is minus 3. 8 take away 8 is 0. 10 take away 8 is 2. And 14 take away 8 is 6. OK? Now, if I was then to think, right, OK, they're the distances. Let's find the average of those numbers. Well, if I try and find the average of those five numbers, they'll all add up to 0. And then 0 divided by 5 is 0. So I wouldn't really have found much. Clearly, these data points aren't 0 on average away from the mean. So I need to find a way of making these numbers positive. Now, there's a couple of ways you could do that. Um, one way would be to use uh, the modulus function. And uh, that would make each of the values uh, positive. However, that can be harder to calculate. So by calculate, I mean program, effectively. So uh, in order to make it easier for the calculation, if I were to program it, then an easier way is actually to square all the numbers, because that will always make a number positive. So I'm going to square each of those. So I'm going to have x minus x bar squared. So minus 5 squared is 25. Minus 3 squared is 9. 0 squared is 0. 2 squared is 4. 6 squared is 36. OK? And what I want to do is I want to add all of those together. So the sum of all the x minus x bars squared. OK? So what do I get? 25 plus 9 plus 0 plus 4 plus 36 is 74. OK? Now, um, what we refer to uh, what we refer to that as is the sum of the squares. OK, that's usually referred to as the sum of the squares. So S, X, X. OK. Now, that's found me the sum of the squares. Now, what I need to do is I need to divide that by 5, divide it by N. OK, so... If I divide this by n, this is the sum of the x minus x bars squared divided by n. And so that would be 74 divided by 5. OK? And that gets me 14.8. So is that done now? Would you say that those data points that I originally started with are, on average, 14.8 away from the mean? Well, no, they're not, are they? Because, I mean, that one, 3 to 8, that's 5. And that's 3. And that's 2. And that's uh, 6. So 14.8 is way too large. So what's happened? Well, I squared all the distances, didn't I? OK, so I need to go back on myself and square root. So what I really need is the square root of all of these. S, X, X's divided by N. So the square root of the sum of the X minus X bars squared over N. So the square root of 74 over 5, or we'll square root 14.8, gets me 3.85 to 3 sig fig, 
which is definitely better. Okay, that makes a whole lot more sense. So 3.85 is the average distance each of those data points are away from the mean. Now, this is what we refer to as the standard deviation. Standard, there we go, if I can spell it, standard deviation. Whereas this calculation here is known as the variance. Okay? So the standard deviation uses this formula here. Now, in actual fact, okay, your calculator can do this for you. So you won't be expected in the exam to ever have to calculate the standard deviation from scratch, okay, from setting out this table. This was all about trying to build up the picture to see where the formula has come from, okay? So how could you do this on your calculator? So what you need to do is you need to go to menu and then number six and then one variable. We need to type in our data, so three, five, eight, 10 and 14. Then go to option number three for one variable calc. And what you're looking for is the sigma x. That's the standard deviation, and you'll find the sigma squared x as the variance. Okay, so we often write the standard deviation as just sigma without the x. Okay, now if you are doing uh, OCR MEI, okay, uh, specifically that exam board, then the standard deviation is actually said to be dividing by n minus 1, which for the rest of us will be the sample standard deviation. So when you're looking at the standard deviation in MEI, you will be looking at SX on your uh, calculator, which is 4.30. And the variance would be s squared x, 18.5. OK? Now, I'm going to explain where the sample standard deviation comes from in a couple of videos. OK? So that you can see, or in the next video, so that you can see precisely where that difference lies. OK? And to make it clear for those studying MEI uh, where this subtle difference is.